Uh, everyone. Um, so by the way, uh, feel free to ask questions in the chat. I, I, I will try to uh, look uh, uh, every now and then on the chat. Um, so uh, quick in introduction. My name is Guy. I'm a software developer at Microsoft. Uh, specifically, I'm working on uh, another copilot for Excel. Uh, if you, some of you use in Office, so you know that like every product of Microsoft uh, almost out there is developing some kind of copilot, um, which is basically integrating a GPT inside the application to help us do stuff. Um, what, but what I'm presenting today is GitHub Copilot, which is the tool for uh, software engineers uh, among us uh, to help us code better and be more productive. Uh, so I'm going to show like use cases um, and what to expect from it, uh, how to use it, how to not use it, and what's the best practices. Um, so let's go. So first, uh, what I'm going to talk about is two tools. The first one is the GitHub Copilot, uh, which is the autocomplete, it's like on canvas Copilot, you can say, which is like, which is like the one that's on the uh, ID on the code itself. Uh, by the way, if you don't have it and you want to like uh, download it, you can like uh, use this QR or go to this um, link here um it has a free version uh it also has enterprise or business version it depends uh on you you can look uh, uh, for your preferences uh the other tool that i'm going to talk about is github copilot chat is uh, another tool that was uh added later on which is basically another pane here on the side which is the uh, a chat like GPT, but you can, it has the context of your code. So you don't have to copy paste parts of your project, etc. You can ask it uh, uh, things and it will know already the context of your uh, project. Uh, and we're going to talk about how we use both of them. So first let's talk about why, what, what, what brought AI into I, the ID? Why? Why? What the three things that the, uh, the folks uh, from uh, GitHub wanted to address? So the first one is to help developer getting up to speed, like um, you know, starting a new project or starting working on a project that already exists, but you maybe you like uh, you first seeing this project and like understanding what's going on there and trying to be productive um, uh, as quickly as possible. Uh, second one is writing repetitive code. This is the code that like, you know, uh, none of us likes to do like, you know, unit test or scenarios that like keep repeating and but but with a bit of, a bit of tweaks. So this these are the things that we know uh, uh, GPT is good at. So it's things that also GitHub Copilot is good at. And the third one is diagnosing issues, like helping us solving problems, understanding errors, and fixing them as well. Um, so let's see what, what, what we're going to see today. We're going to see how we use Copilot to write better code uh, and do it faster. Help us remember stuff that we forgot. Help us also explain code that maybe uh, it's new to us and also explain documentation. Uh, sometimes the, the documentation is, uh, is really long, so we can use it to like summarize what's really important for us. Uh, extend or refactor existing code. Uh, as understand error messages and also fix them. Uh, generate unit test and ask generic uh, software development uh, questions. So these are some of the capabilities of GitHub Copilot, and we're gonna see how we do them. So just like a, a high level of how it works, GitHub Copilot. So basically, um, the GitHub Copilot engine is using both uh, OpenAI Codex model, which is a, a special model de developed for um, completing code. And it also uses GPT-4. In sometimes it's it might be 4.0 by now. Um, and 
um, it's combining uh, according to uh, the scenario. It's combining uh, these two. Now, the OpenAI Codex uh, model is basically trained on all the open source code out there, like every code exists on the internet. So uh, if you're using a language which is common in, in open source, so the, the, the results would be much better if you're using something that is less common. Uh, so there is both the, the training is, uh, is on less data, and this is why the, the results would be um, um, not as better. Um, but this is really similar. So far, it's, it's, you can say it's similar to GPT. Um, the, the advantage with, with GitHub Copilot is once you are signing uh, and you start writing code, it understands what kind of code languages are using, what is the framework that you're using. And also when you open the editor, it's getting some snippet of the code that you're, you're working on as context. And once it has all of this information, it can provide you uh, with suggestions and you can ask to improve it. And this cycle goes on and on. And once I change the context, of course, it's it's changing here as well. And I'm like every time that I'm, I'm doing something, like start writing, it's getting new context with new uh, uh, um, uh, suggestions that they're giving you. And you can also, uh, every time, ask to change. So uh, without further ado, if there are any questions, I I, remember, I, um, I want to remind you, you can ask on the chat. And now we're going to um, do a live um, coding. So let's uh, here open. Um, show preview. So here I have, I'm going to do my demo on JavaScript and HTML uh, because they are the most simplest uh, languages I, I could think of. Uh, but you don't really have to know, uh, I have to know them to understand what I'm showing. Uh, but let's see, let's see here that we have a HTML form with name and password. You can see this is the name, this is the password. And uh, let's say I would want to add email. So we have two, two, two ways to do it. The first one is what we call comment driven uh, uh, prompt which i can say like add email input inside a comment right and once i click enter it reads the contact it reads what i wanted and i can just uh, add them with tab I'm, I'm taking i'm accepting every change that it gives me with the with the clicking tab and now i have the email uh, the problem with this approach is that I'm left with a bunch of comments on my on my code that I will have to later remove, or I can accidentally just like uh, commit them, and and then my code would be with all kinds of comments, um, uh, which doesn't make sense. So another approach would be uh, to uh, press Control I, and I'm using VS Code here. Um, it could be different shortcuts in different IDEs. Uh, but if I do control I and then I can ask it also add email input. I will write enter. And we can see that it added as well. So both approaches, by the way, I can if I'm not uh, if I'm not um, if I'm not uh, satisfied, I can ask to rerun. Um, and I can also toggle changes, like see what's what was here before, what's after, um, and um, I will talk about these a bit later. But I can also not. Uh, it's it's true for all copilots. I can also uh, use the microphone for accessibility, like and and start talking with it. I I. I, I myself use it when I have when I want to create a long prompt, like a, a long instructions. Uh, so I, I prefer just to record myself other than typing everything. So okay, so I added the email input. Now I would go to the JavaScript, and here what I have is like uh, a const that like reference to the email to the inputs. So we have name and password, and here we attach event listener like on if change of this input, we will do something. Uh, now I want to add another one for my new email uh, email input. 
So I can click enter and here he doesn't have the context of the HTML file right now. So it's suggesting to um, listen to a button called submit because it, 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 this is what he figured out I need. Like he ha it, I have name and password and it's guessing that that's the only thing that I would need now is a submit button. But I can just like start typing and it would immediately fix. So I'll say email input. Okay, it's understand. Uh, get with that. And then I also want the event listener. Now it knows how to complete it because it's seeing this file here and it seeing that, all right, you have two const here, you have two event listeners here, but you have another const, so we're missing the event listener. So let's edit. And now let's say that I want a function that would basically uh, validate that whenever I type an email, it would be in valid email uh, format. So what I would then open the uh, control I, by the way, I can close this preview and maybe uh, increase the screen here. Okay. So control I, and I will say, uh, add a function that validates that the email input is in, is a valid, email format. Okay. Let's accept and let's see what's happening here. So basically I have a handle input. Uh, and if the input is email, so it's doing, it's running another function that it gave me, validate email. And it's using regex to see, to check if the email is correct. Now let's see what I can do with this. Um, first, let's say that I um, don't like the reject. Uh, I don't want like reject in my code. I don't, I don't like. I don't know how to read it. Uh, I, I want a better way to do it. So, and this is also uh, true for any code modification you want to know. You have to do. I can select the function, and here I can see this uh, yellow icon. And I can do modify using copilot, and then I can ask what I want to do. I want I want to say, uh, don't use regex. Okay, so let's see what it does. It's it's it's, it's, it's looking for the at sign, and it's uh, then looking that there is a dot after the at. Uh, and it's converted the regex to actually using index of uh, instead of the regex. Uh, um, so it's a good way, by the way, uh, to like if there's like an entire function or a time class that you are not satisfied with how it looks like or how it's uh, uh, performing, you can select and ask to change it. Many people are using it to maybe convert things from one language to another like uh, you can copy a, a javascript uh, um, uh, code and say like select everything and say modify using copilot and say convert it to typescript or convert it to python or whatever uh, so the modify is really strong a uh, powerful tool uh, let's discard this for now and let's see what else i can do so now i want to introduce you uh, the the control I, if I select a, a, a piece of code, so we have the slash uh, slash commands, which are basically it's com it's here we have four commands that like were pre-written that like there is an entire prompt behind every command here, which actually um, uh, we don't need to tell we don't need to say much. We can, just, we can do just like, for example, slash doc and press enter, and it will add a valid documentation with all the needed formats. I don't need to specify like how to do it or like how, what's the, the rules for example, for com comments. Uh, it already knows it. Uh, so I can just use the slash um, um, commands as it is, and you see it added a uh, summarization and params and what it returns. So this is really good technique. Uh, I know many people are skipping comment, uh, comments in, on the code or like um, keeping it for later. 
it's really cool that's like you know every every time that you um uh, and you function just control i docs and it's usually doing a pretty good job i know some people are doing like entire projects of like going over the code and adding comments and just just like just like to have better uh documentation for the for the code what else we can do uh so let's say i'm seeing this regex and i'm new to this code and i want to validate what it does so i can select it again and then control i and then explain now explain will explain what this part of code is doing as, as you can see here uh it, it it's not just like it's not like the commentation where it's like giving me in one sentence what it does it actually it giving me a lot of details of what the code is doing and i'm i'm using the explain a lot to actually learn about other people code for the, for example because here you see it's breaking down the regex to piece by piece and explaining each piece separately so it's a really good tool for uh for learning um for learning and uh, like understanding other people uh other people code or maybe code that you wrote but maybe you forgot what what you did there so uh really good uh tool as well um now let's see another thing and let's say i'm a I'm a, like another developer or in some like some other folks accidentally changed the regex and they like uh, committed it and now the function doesn't work uh, what I can do is I can try and do uh, control I slash fix now fix is not always working uh, I mean sometimes you have to give it more context like maybe fix is not enough uh, because it doesn't actually run the code and gets like an error message and then try to understand this thing you have to provide yourself it will try to see like if there are any problems in your code now here it it works like magic because you see when i toggle it actually spotted the missing part in my regex but in many cases instead of like just giving it the same fix i can do a uh, fix and like maybe say the regex is not working or i get i get error where or, or, you know i get that uh, a valid email like uh, is not valid or like give it some things like more context so it will understand sometimes as, as you see here just less fix is working um let's do it again because i didn't apply the fix Okay, yeah, so if we toggle again, you see, and let's accept. Another thing that us as developers usually don't like to do, and Visual uh, Kitab Copilot is really good at, is creating unit tests. So control I again on the part of code that I want to test and slash tests. Now I don't want I don't need to specify and say okay I want these kind of tests like and try to make them diverse etc etc et it already has all the uh, explanation inside uh, the prompt that was uh, provided uh, behind the scene. Now if I accept you will notice that I have uh, if I save it you notice that it, it's it's created a new file here. Oh, you see, it's uh, suggesting, and I can save it now. And now I have a script that test.js with basically test, and let, let's see, let's see them. Um, so I have valid email without uh, at, without the uh, domain, without user, without space, without uh, etc. There's uh, all kinds of uh, scenarios, and just like with, with one click. Now this is all good but i'm not sure like what is this code and how do i run it these tests right so now uh, let's open copilot chat 
And with the chat, I can say, suggest ways. By the way, the chat always gets the open file as co context by default. So uh, I can just ask things about the file. So I can say, suggest ways to run these tests. And once I click enter, you see it getting the file as, 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 a, as a context. It, 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 it's disappeared. Ah, I can see here. Um, and it's saying these are tests of Jest uh, framework. And this is how you do it. And it's given me here terminal, uh, terminal uh, scripts. I, I don't need even I don't I, I don't need to copy paste them because I have here, as you can see, um, insert into terminal. It, it identified that this is a terminal script and I can just look insert the terminal. It opens the terminal. It's adding the command. Terminal is a bit stuck. Let's see. Let's try it again. Let's erase these. For some reason, my terminal is not opening. I mean, I can type here. Uh, second. There's something wrong with the terminal. So let's open the command line because I do want to. Sh oh, wait. Let, let me just try to restart the Visual Studio a second. Let's see if it would work. Okay, for some reason, my terminal is not working. Oh, that's too bad. Another one. Okay, okay, something is working. Okay, so let's go back to the chat. Maybe yeah, it saved my last uh, my last message. So here I can just do insert the terminal. Oh, okay, it's not working. Not sure why. This is the thing with live demos. Uh, but basically, you see, once we are on in PowerShell command, we can have this uh, insert the terminal. I can also, oh, now it's okay. Now something is working. Okay. So insert. Let's try. Not, not sure. Something probably one with my VS code. So we can also do copy. Oh, yeah. I, think I have some kind of delay. Okay, insert. Now it's working. So it says, okay, first install VS code. So I'm doing that. And then you can go to package JSON. I can also click. I mean, it identifies uh, my, it, it knows what's going on in my project. So I can just like click here on the suggestion, it would open the file. And you can add this, you need to add this script. So I don't, I, even here, I don't have to copy paste. I can just look, do insert at cursor. See, it's adding the script. I, I don't need, I just don't need this curly brackets here. Save it. Uh, and then you go to the terminal again, you do run test. So then insert the terminal, play. 
I mean, now we see it's running. I don't. I didn't have to look in just uh, API or just documentation. It's giving me all of this like by just like asking it, uh, and it's giving the command already like uh, suit for my specific project. Now I see there is a failure. So another thing I can do with Copilot is highlight the entire context of the failure and right click and copilot explain this basically it's i'm asking it explain the error here explain what's happening here and it's uh it's now it's it's trying it's usually trying to figure out by the command but by, by only this like to um to try to figure out what's the problem and giving me solutions. If I want to give it more context, I will show you later how we can like add because here I just like did explain and it, it got, doesn't give me ways to add more context or maybe, but I can do that. Uh, I'll, I'll later show you how. Um, let's go back a bit to the unit test before we go. Uh, I, I'm, I'm doing like a jumps between the chat and the, and the copilot. Now let's close the terminal and close the chat and let's go back to the unit test here. Now, let's say I want to add more cases. Usually when we have patterns, it's really good with just like completing us without us saying anything. So I can accept it, right? I can also say, I can also hover and see what other suggestions I have here. In this case, there's only one suggestion for some reason, but I can do always control a row and not accept, like tab is accepting everything, but control arrow would accept it like token by token, you can say. Uh, and I can like in every, in every time I can stop and okay, now I have three suggestions. Why? Because tests that start with should return false for, so in this case, Copilot has three suggestions for me uh, and I can like, switch with them and decide what I want to accept. But this is still a bit limited. What I would recommend usually when you're looking for more suggestions is to do to uh, press control enter. Control enter is another uh, copilot pane um, which exists on Visual Studio Code, which is basically adding us a lot of more a lot of more suggestions than usually you will see on Canvas. Here you can see like suggestions of like, this is that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, like another eight scenarios. Uh, uh, in this case, this one, this one is a bit buggy, right? It's giving me the same one, so I would not take this one. But uh, here, here, this one, for example, have different scenarios. Uh, so I can just like accept suggestion seven, it would add immediately more suggestions. Uh, so when do you use it? When you're not satisfied with the autocomplete, um, I mean, I can go ahead and take more and more and more and more. Uh, but if you're not satisfied with this, you can also do control enter and ask for more broader uh, suggestions. Um, I want to remind us, I see some folks joined later. If you want to ask anything, you can use the chat, right? Um, so let's let's go back to the chat once I have all the unit tests here. So basically I completed the feature, right? I added a new function, <laughs> but I added a new input. I added a new function to handle it. I added documentation and I added unit tests for, um, for my uh, new feature. Now let's go back to the chat and see what we can do else with the chat. So the chat, first of all, you have to understand that the chat is when I type something, uh, it's also it's all it's always getting a uh, reference as uh, of the chat history. It means that if I'm not satisfied with the results I have in the history, it will keep giving me more of the same, like more of the things that I'm not satisfied with. How do I deal with it? Few, way, few ways. One is I can go 
and delete, you see, remove request and response, like remove the request and the response from the history. So like if I have like a specific message that I sent and I got a, not a good response and I'm not satisfied with it, I can remove it. And I can also always open a new chat. New chat has a blank history and it will not go to the context. And here in this button, I can see um, a history of my chat that I can use. Uh, so it's always saved. I'm not sure how back. It has some kind of a limit, uh, but as you can see, I have a lot of chat here. Um, now, the chat would work best if you give it more context than the code open here. And how do we do it? First, let's start with the at. At is saying, like, what do I want to ask about? Do I want to ask about, let's say, workspace is like ask about my code that exists in my workspace. Do I want to ask something about VS Code? Meaning, do I want to, uh, VS Code means like it would use the VS Code documentation. Like it's like some kind of like a help. Like if I want, like how do I change VS Code uh, to light mode, to dark mode? How do I change font, uh, etc.? How do I debug using VS Code? So I can use this uh, VS Code. At terminal is, is do I want to ask something about the terminal as we've seen before? And at GitHub is do I want to if I want to ask something that like uh, I want to get from the web? What do I want to get from the web? Things that are like recent, like for example, slash GitHub. Uh, what is the most recent version? of Node.js, for example, or, or, or React. Uh, and like, it would look in the web and would find it out instead of me searching and looking in the package and see what's the most recent. Um, so let's say I would start, uh, second, second layer of uh, context is the slash. Now slash, as you've seen before, we have explain, we have search, uh, we have other things as well, like new. Uh, maybe I want to start a new project, so I can say new uh, React project with um, a hello component or whatever. I can start here and it will create a new project for me with the relevant files. We also have new Jup new notebook, like if we want to create new uh, Jupyter notebook. And the rest are familiar for us, right? Fix, explain, and tests. And the more inner layer of context is the um, um, star mark, which basically means what do I want to ask about? Um, if I, do I want to ask something about the open, the active code in the editor, like the active uh, tab? Do I want to ask about a specific file? And then it, you see, if I, once I click it, it asks me, okay, which file? So I want to ask about this one, for example. Uh, do I want to ask about the code which is selected? Not all the editor, but only the selected code. Do I want to ask about uh, the, maybe if it's the terminal, do I want to ask about something in the terminal? Uh, or do I want to ask something about <laughs> VS Code API? which is a, a new thing, by the way. Uh, so these are like more specific things. And I usually do combination, right? So I can say, okay, workspace, and I want to ask about a file, and let's say skip JS, and what do I want? I want to uh, ask um, um, what, like, what other, uh, packages I can use to run tests like these, for example. Or I can do combination of like workspace and add few files and say using file, my HTML file and my script file, add more, uh, or maybe suggest more 
input uh, I can ask from the user. Like, and now it's looking at both of the, like, my HTML file, my JavaScript file, and, it's, and I can give it more files. And I can give it more things. I can give it like files and terminal. I can say, um, when running tests from file and this one, script test test, I got the error and let's do last terminal command. So when I ran the script of the test, and now it also has like how the test file looks like, I got the error, which is like, look at the last terminal error. How do I fix it? Etc. Etc. You you get the, uh, the the so basically what I recommend to you to do is try to use these combinations and see how it works for you. How you would see like a significant improvement once you give it a better context. Uh, any questions? So we're done with the live demo. I will go to let's say some takeaways. <laughs> So basically, we've seen we've seen how we wrote code, how we modified it, how uh, we can help use we can use Copilot to help us understand things or explain things to us. How we can refactor or change code. How do we understand error messages? We generate tests or ask uh, general questions using the chat. Um, there was a um, a study done um, where there are about 95, like uh, one, about 95 developers, and they were split into two groups, and they were asked to develop a web server in JavaScript. The people, that, the group that did use Copilot, um, did it in less than half of the time. Uh, that it was taken for people that didn't use GitHub Copilot. And now that I showed you the demo, I think you understand why, because <laughs> you just start typing and immediately you get an entire function. And, and maybe if you wrote it yourself, you would probably have errors. I'm not guaranteeing that it would not have errors from Copilot, but it's giving you a much better, uh, uh, a, 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 like a, a much better and faster approach to start things and then you can work on improving them. <clears throat> um, by the way, there was a server a survey done also um, uh, among people who are using uh, Copilot and not using. 87% uh, of the developers said they have less mental effort on repetitive tasks, like the one that, like writing unit tests, etc. 74% um, uh, said they're more focused on satisfying work, right? The, the work that is less satisfying for them, they usually use Copilot to do it. And uh, they, they like, what they do need to do is to focus on things that they, they like more, like thinking of like how to design things, how to uh, better write them, how to structure the code, etc. 73% uh, say they're more in the flow. The flow is like the zone when you start coding and you have no interruptions and you don't have a lot of context switch, for example, like open the browser, search, etc. Once you have everything in the IDE, you can focus um, and be more productive. Now, I said a lot of uh, about context, like what is the context that GitHub Copilot is getting? So the first one is the open files. It's usually not only the, it, it's usually mo most, most of the time it's the open tab itself, but in some cases it's also uh, giving some code from the neighboring tab. Like the other tabs that are open in your IDE, but you, it's, they're not like, like open, but not uh, the ones that like shown. Uh, and, but this is limited, of course, because we can't serve all the tabs. So it's important for you, once you work on something, keep the, the open tabs only that relevant to the task that you're working on. Top level comments are really good 
context for uh, Copilot. The, the, the comments in, at the beginning of the file that says what this file is meant to do. Because this way Copilot can understand like what is the what's what, what what do you want to do in this file and give better suggestions of like how to improve it, how to add more stuff. Another thing is the includes or reference or imports at the top of the file. It also helps a uh, copilot understand which packages you're using and it can uh, suggest code using these packages. Use meaningful names. If I call a, a constant, for example, or a variable, if I call it user, so copilot understand it's a single object. But if I call it users, it understand it's an array of objects and it would give you entire different suggestions. Specific comments on like variables, parameters, uh, properties of classes like uh, or functions, every comments that you can give in the code would give better context. And also code samples. Uh, Copilot is using, is reading how your code is looking like and is trying to do things the same. If you're not, for example, if you're not satisfied with how your code is currently looking, so I would suggest modifying it before asking Copilot to add more stuff because it would just give you more of the things you don't like. Let's talk about uh, the limitations. So first, um, as I said before, training data is uh, has a big impact. So if you're using code languages which are, which are not really common, like uh, no, Pascal, uh, etc., uh, or they're not really common in open source, um, so it would give you less good suggestions. GitHub Copilot is not a compiler. I mean, it, it doesn't run the code that it gives you. It's basically just text for it. So don't rely on it to actually compile. It's also not doing automation tests on your code. It does doing security scanning of like making sure that your <coughs> that, that the code is provided you is, is secure enough, et cetera, et cetera. Meaning that you are the pilot and this is the co-pilot. You have to verify that the code that it's giving you is correct for you. Try to be as most single and specific tests that you can give it, like don't ask for entire project that does uh, one ABC and and has multiple files, or don't ask to change a lot of things <laughs> because it would just get confused, or maybe would get to the uh, limit of tokens that it can provide you. <clears throat> so I suggest keeping it simple and ask for simple stuff and single stuff. Show the right context, as I told you before. That like make sure that the history in the chat is suits for you. That the open files that you have, the open tabs, are related to your task. And try to rephrase. A lot of a lot of times when I ask something, and I do like retry, retry, and I keep getting the same thing. <coughs> in a lot of cases, it just like I just need to change my question a bit, because there are language models after all. And once I change <clears throat> a bit of the sentence, I get a different results. And I want to show you, <coughs> sorry, um, a study that was done recently. Uh, the, these are homes which are basically the same, but in the red one, they added, this is very important to my career at the end of the prompt. And all models that were tested, and you can see here, not only GPT, all models, uh, performed better and gave better results in this case. Now I'm not saying add this if uh, uh, this sentence to every prompt you're doing, but just see the impact of rephrasing or even adding psychologically uh, uh, psychological uh, terms inside uh, the prompt. Sometimes it can work to give better results. If you want to learn more about Copilot and have like short videos, uh, you can use uh, this QR or maybe go to AKMS GitHub Copilot Fun. It has a lot of instructions. And uh, that's it for me. If there are no uh, other questions, uh, I'm, uh, uh, 
so thank you very much. And you can also uh, add me on LinkedIn if you have uh, further questions. I think you must have answered everything. We don't have anything in chat at all. So well done. <laughs> <laughs> really good session. Um, uh, some great anomalies there in your demo. That just always happens. <laughs> but, yeah, apart from that, really great session. Thank you. Thank so you very much. much. Thank you, everyone.